for sulfide groups. For the sulfide groups, we only have sulfide groups now. Um, so um, the specific ions, to my knowledge, that we have in this mixture is iron, chromium, and uh, manganese. So based on the procedure, she's asking to add 20 drops of the mixture containing all three ions into a test tube with the 20 drops. And I just need two more drops. You can also count if you like, or just trust me. I have 20 drops of the sample in it. I'm going to add 10 drops of the uh, sodium hydroxide solution. Based on the procedure again, 10 drops of sodium hydroxide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drops of sodium hydroxide. Mix well and place in the boiling water bath or hot water bath. Just going to use a test tube holder and I place in hot water bath for one minute. Okay, after the one minute of heating, we take it out of the heat and we place in a centrifuge to centrifuge now for the next step based on the procedure. I do have my other test tube also to balance the mass of the test tube in the centrifuge so the centrifuge does not walk or drop. We turn on for one minute centrifuge. Okay. When the centrifuge is done, we are going to remove and uh, decant the clear solution. Decant the clear solution into a test tube labeled B. So now we have two test tubes. The clear solution is in test tube B. And what we have in the solution, it would be chromium ion. What's left in the solid would be iron and manganese ions. So I leave the test tube A for now. And I am going to test for the chromium ion using the test tube B. Okay. Okay, to the to this the supernatant, we are adding two drops of the uh, the hydrogen peroxide, three percent hydrogen peroxide, that is going to bring our chromium from three plus to six plus. That's what we want to have, so it would oxidize the chromium. Um, so this yellow color actually now. It, it indicates that we do have chromium. But to confirm the presence of chromium, we want to add next step, based on the procedure, we are going to add barium chloride. If we add the barium chloride, we expect to get a yellow color precipitate. And when the yellow color precipitate, and I hope you could see that precipitate here, it turns cloudy, that is a confirmation test for presence of uh, chromium in the mixture. If it's unknown or known, this is confirming that chromium is present after adding barium chloride. Okay, now that we confirm presence of chromium, we are going back to test tube A, where we had the um, solid, uh, which was the hydroxide precipitate of iron, and uh, manganese. Uh, these precipitates, they would dissolve in nitric acid. So based on the procedure, I'm going to add six molar nitric acid to the precipitate, um, trying to dissolve it. It would dissolve when the solution is, um, is acidic enough. It would dissolve the solution. Just going to give some time 
And also, this is a strong acid. The base, it generates some heat, giving you, giving some time for it to dissolve. You have to add enough until it is dissolved completely. I have both iron and manganese in the solution. Now, I have both of them in the solution. I'm going to take like two portion, like I'm going to take um, some of this liquid and test for iron and I take some more to take to test for uh, for the um, manganese so I would take it just now transfer and place it in the test tube labeled D and I would use for that one for iron and I take one for test tube labeled E to test for manganese. Okay, now we have so allocate of solution in test tube D, which we are going to use it for manganese and then E for um, iron. It doesn't matter which one to use, but because the lab manual, it says D for manganese, I'm going to use D for manganese. Uh, to confirm presence of the manganese, I'm going to take the solution and add sodium bismuthate and a purple color. If purple color appears by adding sodium bismuthate, that means manganese has been oxidized to permanganate and the purple color appears. So the purple color, hope that you could see it, the camera, a purple color, Oh, dark color is not going to make it better, but white color maybe. So we have the purple color showing that we have manganese. That's the presence of MN. For the next test tube, which I have E, for presence of, I use this one for confirming presence of iron. And for the iron, I'm using potassium thiocyanate and the sodium bismuthate, the solid compound that I used earlier. So we're using now potassium thiocyanate to add to the solution that contains iron, a bloody red color. It's going to show the presence or confirms the presence of that. That is a red color, but it's just really dark red color. It's so dark that it's, it looks like black now but to make it maybe more visible for you, just adding some DI water, maybe I can get you to see the red color better, okay? When I, when I move it around, you could see the red color with the white background, you have red color. Is it obvious? Could you see the red color? But definitely different than what we had before, okay? This is the original. And this is after adding potassium thiocyanate with the red or bloody red color of the solution. Okay, I'm repeating the iron in a larger test tube. I just wanna add one drop of the, uh, the potassium thiocyanate for you to see the, the red color forming. Okay, now it's like a bloody red color that is, uh, is forming. It's easier to see it now with the large test tube. And is on the, the, the wall also, it looks like red color, right? Okay. And that's the end of this experiment. Record your observation carefully, and then you complete your data sheet for it. Great. This one shows much better red, red color. <laughs>